but I'm not a dancer and I'm not a choreographer. So always, you know, the kind of point of um, the, my, my base point in coming into these sets is very abstract. Uh, and I'm, you know, sometimes I would, I would have ideas of how I would want the image to feel or how I, I want them to feel or what I want them to project, but it's always very, very open. And so I always feel like there's room for them to take those guides and bring something out of their own. Um, and I think this is maybe also the difference, the big difference between classical dance and contemporary dance and the, the fact that I'm so attracted to contemporary dances because it is a much more of a collaborative process and it's um, and it's much less about um, um, limiting, it's about allowing and it's about collaborating, it's, it's about free uh, freedom of the body and there's unlimited um, vocabulary in which you can work in. Okay, so I grew up uh, in Israel, um, you know, went to a regular high school but had a photography um, kind of major but it was a very very simple modest like black and white dark room, um, you know, this is kind of where I started. Uh, photography even though I, I didn't like it in the beginning because film was a really slow process for me uh, you know as someone who knew nothing about this medium uh, I didn't feel like I'm getting good fast enough like you know I I kept on trying and I got this really you know simple images that I didn't like and it was only when I got my first digital camera um, you know when I started being really happy uh, with this medium and I started making fast process because I could see right away what I'm getting um, and I could fix myself really fast and um, that this really... This is in high school? That you this is in high school and that kind of really uh, you know formed my process with photography and you know, I shoot a lot and I fix it as I go you know and um, after high school I went to the military for three years which is uh, mandatory in Israel for guys, uh, I mean for guys and for girls, but for guys it was three years at the time uh, when I went. Uh, and I had this uh, dream of being a military photographer, um, but the military wasn't really, um, you know, coping with that dream <laughs> in the beginning. And so what happened eventually that the first eight months of my service, it was um, kind of like an impossible and... Um, really, really frustrating uh, war uh, of me against the big military. Mm. Um, I don't know why I thought that I'm gonna win <laughs> in this war because it was really just like, when you're drafted into the military, you're their property. Um, you know, you don't get to decide anything. Uh, they own you. Um, and they go whatever you, they think, I mean, you go whenever they think that you're best fit to and so I was supposed to be uh, um, something in communication and I was just like not willing. I knew that there's a photography um, position in the military's magazine um, and this is because the military is so big in Israel there's it you know it's basically like the biggest organization in the country and it covers so much um, fields and so many people are in it it has its own magazine which actually doesn't really exist anymore um, but I really wanted to go there because it was the most diverse and um, complex kind of position for a photographer because military covered everything uh, Air Force, uh, Navy, ground forces, special units um, so and I somehow got into I got a meeting with the head of the photography there and I he basically accepted me like I, I went over a few tests and I got in uh, but the military still w didn't let me go and so for these eight months I um, you know I spent trying different methods and sending in different forms and basically getting like denied again and again and again I was in many different places because I wasn't I, I kept resisting the kind of the things that they gave me they just threw me out of one place and into the other and I it was many different places and kind of really awful 
uh, places too, mm -hmm. um, and bad experiences, and a lot of like mental anxiety mm -hmm. and uh, depression, and you know, I mean, I, because I felt like I got accepted, and I can, I can do it. Like I felt like I was close, even though, even though I was really, really far. Uh, from actually getting there and I but I somehow didn't give up like after each time I got rejected I was I tried something else and um, I did some really crazy things and you know there's stories that I can't really uh, share but um, you know it it you know I had some crazy stories about that period and so somehow somehow and I still don't know completely to explain how it happened but somehow I um, I managed like I, I got I got the job and the job the position the, uh, and I got transferred there three uh, eight months into my service and uh, then I had two years and four months of the best time of my life so the, the magazine was kind of split between um, news and magazine so in the news section we did mostly photo photo documentary work um, and we were sent to um, document different operations or different, you know, uh, even illustration photos for items that we were going to the news section. And the magazine section, which was more of my favorite thing to do, was uh, longer stories, so a few pages, and we got spreads of images of uh, either um, special units or uh, different trainings and operations or anything that the magazine would write on and yeah. you know, it was kind of more wide you know we would sometimes spend like a few days um, in different bases uh, across the country um, some interviews and some some more staged stuff um, and this is kind of where I discovered that I really like to stage um, the images that I'm making and I really I was really interested in light and so I would carry with me like a few different uh, um, small speed lights and I would put the like improvise I didn't I couldn't take uh, tripods with me so it was always like just me putting them on different stuff okay. it was like all very um, like guerrilla photography but it was really fun and um, it was an amazing school, you know, I kind of every day we did something different and we would uh, go all along the military and see, meet different people and see different things and every day was different um, and it was very intense, you know, it was um, kind of, you know, I didn't know a lot about photography when, technical photography when I came there and it just forced me to shoot every day and so I feel like this is really my first degree. Um, you know, and then I came here to New York right after I was um, released from the military and I, I got a scholarship uh, to go to SVA, uh, the School of Visual Arts. And so, you know, that was my technical, you know, first degree, but I really felt like it was my master's. I, I came in with a lot of um, technical knowledge, but I knew nothing about art. Um, and I kind of did an opposite route of uh, most of my colleagues in school because a lot of them were 18 years old right out of uh, high school and I was uh, 21, 22 when I started and they were they had no technical knowledge but there was something very raw uh, and like um, I don't know something very pure about the images they were making and I came with all of this technical knowledge um, and the, the work that I was making in the beginning was very, very uh, technical and kind of, you know, not, not, um, it didn't feel like art at all. It was very kind of cold. Mm. And so we did the opposites routes while we were there because I was really trying to get my work to be complex and meaningful and um, natural in a way and... Um, organic and uh, they were doing more work on the technical side and so it was an interesting dialogue there and I got a lot of critique about um, beauty in my work it was kind of like it, it was a bad thing like in art school to you know if you're getting a critique um, you know this is this is beautiful this is too beautiful it's not it's not a good thing you know like what what, how do I not make, you know, beautiful <laughs> things? This is how I see the world. Yeah. Um, and I, 
I'm also attracted to that visually in the way that I like to stage things. You know, beauty is something I um, appreciate and admire. And yeah. so it was, it, it, it took me a few years. I think only in my last year in school, I realized that I, I don't have to stop making beautiful things. Um, I just need to learn how to make it complex. I started working with dancers, you know, around my second, third year in school. My cousin was a dancer in Juilliard, and so his friends were the first ones to volunteer when I needed models for anything. And so in the beginning, they were just kind of models, you know, in the projects that I was making. And as I spent more time with them, and I, as I started watching dance in Juilliard, which was kind of my, my school for, um, you know, to be educated about dance, it was the first time that I watched dance. Um, it was a really great place to be educated and see different styles and, um, you know, really great young dancers performing um, different kind of works. And so um, I became interested in dance and in the dancers. And I, in my thesis project, Intention, I, I really wanted to do something about dance, but I didn't really know what, uh, what exactly. And I invited um, one of the dancers, Spencer, that I knew that he is extremely smart and original and really an amazing mover uh, with his body and I just invited him to the studio and we started playing um, and we were talking about the differences between photography and dance and how they're really opposites and how photography is all about that one decisive moment and it only exists in this one moment and dance is necessarily a series of moments and so you know I was really interested in doing something that mixes these two mediums together. We were thinking how one image could hold a few moments and that's how the double exposures and sometimes multi-exposures started to happen. And basically it was just moving around and I took a lot of pictures and then I played with them and we started doing this, um, developing this technique of the of the multi-exposures but I think going back to that prettiness problem that I had um, I learned that um, intention I learned that um, I could keep on doing making beautiful images um, and my way of fighting that prettiness in that project was the movement language so I asked the dancers to do things that were very kind of like quirky and not long and beautiful lines and not perfect balletic you know kind of style but I wanted them to I told them to break their body parts I really like the sharp lines and I like that each part is separated from the other part and um, I wanted them to f like to kind of feel that tension in their body and to go really kind of with like inside um, and feeling like everything is really difficult and I feel like this movement language created the images that were had more layers to them and felt more complex than you know the the simple pretty images that I was making before. Informant is the most simple project I've ever made, um, and it's um, basically based on. I mean, it, the idea of the technique is based on the old-fashioned like a uh, film shoot with infrared or, 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 or ultraviolet film um, or filter on the camera. So they used to uh, do those in the film days. Um, you know, a lot, actually it's been used a lot in landscapes because what it does is that it takes the warm, all the warm tones are coming onto the surface and all the cool tones are kind of disappearing and becomes really bright. And so a lot of people used it uh, to get really dark skies because of the the blue and um, I mean more of the infra the infrared was making the blue really 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 dark and what I used more uh, was the opposite like the ultraviolet and yeah. that that brings the warm uh, uh, the warm tones to the surface and really emphasize and this is why all of the things under the skin because it's all warm uh, comes out and you know, whoever has like bright eyes, like blue or green, this thing turns really kind of white and creates that, that hybrid yeah, creature. um, creature-y 
feeling uh, feel. So what I did is that I did it all digital, which made which made everything uh, much more simple. Um, these were shot all in natural light um, and very kind of simple setting. I think all of all of it or most of it was with a 50 lens, uh, regular color photographs, and then. In processing in Photoshop, I, when you convert to black and white, you have the opportunity to control each one of the tones and how it translates into um, a gray shade. And so I could imitate that ultraviolet or infrared um, look. So I was on a vacation in Israel. And a friend of mine who was dancing for Bacheva called me and he said, you know, we're working on the evening now of the dancers uh, creating work. And so it's all original work by the dancers. And we're also in charge of all the production aspects of that evening. So we need to create a poster um, to promote this evening. And he said, would you, would you do it? And, you know, I was like, uh, it's a dream of mine to work uh, with Bacheva. And so I was... Definitely, I would love doing that. Um, but I also say, is there a budget? And he's like, no, it's all on us. It's all the dancers. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, can I do whatever I want then? And he's like, totally. Because, you know, it's different, different works by different dancers. It doesn't have one theme. So the poster could be a lot of different things. And, you know, they were open for me coming with this idea. And similarly to Inframan, like I also had this image in my head for many years of this like pile of, of dancers. And I didn't know if it was um, technically possible. Like, you know, in my head they were sort of like really on top of each other and I thought that they would choke or, you know, so I kind of came to them and you know, we were all in the, in the big studio uh, in Tel Aviv. And I, I told them, you know, I have this vision, but I don't know if it's possible. And what I love about dancers is that they would never say no. You know, they would say yes, and then they'll figure it out. It was really fascinating uh, seeing um, the process of them going about and figuring out a really intelligent way, intelligent way to um, construct this pile and you know in their case it was kind of like they separated it into two layers of of piles like the one of them was started kind of higher and it was dancers more like like leaning down or like um bending and that was the back layer and the front layer was dancers that were more on the floors and then like more you know, embedded into each other. And so from the front, it really looked like one beautiful pile. And, you know, it was kind of, you know, the first one that we got that was really a perfect half circle. Um, and I told them that I really wanted the, the body parts to go intertwine and to, uh, I explained to them how I, it's really important then that, that the image is complex. Yeah. And that, that there is, um, you know, a really, a true and real connection of bodies uh, that kind of brings into the surface what the what a dance company is you know it's a it's a group of people who are really destined to spend their life together for a period of time and in a really intimate way mm -hmm. uh, to live to work to rehearse to tour uh, and there's a lot of interesting relationships uh, being created between the dancers you know some romantic some like really strong friendships um, you know and each one of these companies had to have um, an original way of physically communicating and going about that simple task of making a pile of bodies um, so when I got this image from Bacheva that I was really happy with I kind of knew, I looked at the image and I knew, okay, this is the new project now. Um, and I was really, really lucky to have them as the first company and to have sort of like an in, because I didn't really have to go through the company and like say, would you let me uh, photograph the company? The dancers came to me and they needed this image to, um, to promote um, their piece. And, you know, I feel like I got so much out of it because going after that to other companies and say, oh, you know, I have Bacheva like taking part of this and, you know, a lot of other companies, um, you know, like that and they wanted to be associated with uh, them because they're making really good work. Um, 
and then the other companies, you know, each 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 one of the companies was a different story about um, in terms of how to get them to do it. And, you know, I, you know, I came very aware with the fact that they need to gain something. You know, if I'm asking them for their pressure, uh, precious time and, you know, they're talented dancers and I, I need to offer something for the companies. And each company had a different um, um, way of letting me, uh, gifting them with something. You know, it was sometimes it was headshots for the dancers and sometimes it was a promotional image for the company. Um, um, yeah, and it was a very open dialogue and I'm very grateful for the company directors that were always very open, almost always very open to, um, all of the companies that were in the projects were amazing. Uh, and Flux, because it was such um, a long process working on, the, on it, it was two years and a half, and most of it wasn't the actual shooting, but most of it was the um, negotiating and reaching out yeah. and emailing and um, really getting the companies to say yes and give me their dancers and their precious time. Um, and because it was such a... Uh, um, a long process that was not very hands-on. It was all basically administrative. I really needed to do something in between. Like I, 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 I really believe that a photographer and maybe an artist should always be in the doing of something. Uh, so I, I had to find a short project that I could do in between and that was kind of started more in, in a fun and free way. There weren't many restrictions and um, and that's how Flower He Is started. Um, I actually met this, um, this artist that came here from Russia and he showed me some work he was doing there um, with headpieces he was uh, making for fashion models. Um, and it was all shot in the studio and very kind of fashiony, glossy uh, kind of in kind of way and all on females and when he showed me this work I told him he just came to New York and he wanted to start creating here and I told him if you wanted to collaborate and develop your uh, American portfolio I, I would love to shoot one of these headpieces on uh, male dancers and he loved that idea and so he made this first um, headpiece and of course I went back to a dancer that I worked a lot with Austin Goodwin <laughs> um, and again I feel like in the beginning of projects I like using the dancers that I have really positive experience with and I trust that they can bring something really interesting to the table and to kind of form the beginning of this project that would kind of influence and um, you know make the the rest of it and so I, um, I invited him to this uh, a really amazing apartment that we found um, in the Upper East Side. And we just started shooting in the apartment and getting really interesting um, shots and we loved the images and this is how we, you know, we started, uh, we decided to keep on going and make it a whole uh, series. I, I thought that it was a really beautiful metaphor uh, to work with this flower, like flowers and dancers, and um, kind of thinking how a dancer's career um, is really short, and it's it's blooming really in a really young age, and you're kind of getting into your best physical shape, and then very fast you start to wilt, you know, and you know it's it's very tragic, but I felt like. It's also very beautiful, and I felt like this contrast between the the tragedy and the and the and the prettiness is um, is again my my place of kind of finding that dark dark side. Never am I making my whole income solely from art photography, mm. you know, and making kind of the, my favorite work with dancers. Um, uh, I think I'm very, very lucky uh, to be able to have a lot of the commercial work that I'm making dance related. And I think this is really because the dance community in New York is so strong and is so supportive. And I feel like from the first moment that I started working with dancers, 
they did an amazing job with spreading the images and um, giving feedback and sharing the work with their colleagues. Um, and that created two things. It created one uh, very pool, very large pool of dancers that are willing to work with me. Um, and secondly, uh, a lot of dancers, uh, both that I worked with or that worked with uh, dancers that I worked with, um, that um, grow to be um, either dancers in really important companies or really original and amazing young companies or choreographers of companies. And so I feel like I'm growing, I'm growing with that community too. You know, a lot of people that I worked with when, when they were students are now like some in some of the most important like contemporary companies or um, some of the most promising emerging choreographers. Dance chargers love the jump. <laughs> yes, but I actually hate I actually hate jumps in dance, and I hate uh, jumps in dance photography. Um, so I try not to use it very much. But um, the images, the image that I was thinking when I was telling you that was uh, an image that I made for Mad Boots, mm -hmm. uh, which is also um, one of my biggest collaborators, and I really. Um, believe in their work, uh, in the quality of their work, and I really started working with them when they started, so I feel like we, we grow together. Um, and one of the shoots that we made was for their piece Academy, which was influenced by um, a lot of ideas that had to do with masculinity, and they were wearing this like, um, is it baseball? Um, baseball um, pants. Mm -hmm. And we went. We were shooting in McCarran Park, um, and um, I knew that I wanted to play on that static and motion thing. And um, I asked one of the dancers to uh, stand in the front, and then the rest of the three of them were, were jumping in the back, but they weren't like doing the classic like dancey jump. They were just like kind of jumping like just kind of from their torsos up and it's a really really simple jump and I felt like it was really strong um, for that image like I think that image still goes with me for a lot of shoots that I do for companies on location because I think it brings in a lot of like the ideas that I believe in and love in those promotional images you know in the past most of promotional images for dance were images from the piece on stage and I don't think it's a uh, it's fair for the dance to take a moment of it you know and and put it on a poster because I feel like dance has a unique thing that happens on stage and you know I would never try it I would I would never try to make dance um, in my images, you know, I am influenced by dance, I work with a community of dance, I use ideas of dance, uh, but I'm not making dance. Um, and I, I think it's, it's really important to kind of, um, when we're promoting these dance pieces, to take ideas and concepts and feelings from the piece and create an image that represents them on a higher visual level. Mm -hmm. The promotional image for Bacheva, was actually taken in the same time that I was doing my Phlox um, photo. And really what happened is that I came there and um, we did the, the pile photo and um, then we, we, I wanted to make another image for them for the poster in case that they wanted something different. And they called that evening of um, dancers create they called it plaza that year um and i was kind of i don't know i was thinking about that name and just i had this idea of you know dancers falling back and getting them in slow exposure kind of like and so because i had so many dancers i had the opportunity to do like a few so a few of them were the falling dancers and a few of them were the catching ones so they stood behind them and you know they sort of had to the falling ones had to let go and just go back and i felt like this image needs like one center to for the focus to 
go to because that kind of felt more like a background yeah. um, and so I asked Shamel and um, Bobby uh, which are two of the most striking <laughs> dancers of Bacheva um, and I thought they will be like a really interesting combination um, I asked them to just stand in the middle and hug um, and it worked I think I can I can say I'm self-taught for for that military period definitely there wasn't any um, kind of artistic mentors in that process we had uh, a photography director in the magazine but the magazine was a very very small unit uh, basically he was the only photo person and he was um, very knowledgeable but you know quite older and spent many many years there and we didn't have everything was going so fast um, we didn't really have time to sit and talk about work um, you know we were learning by the images that the editors would choose to use and so that's kind of was our feedback to what's good and what's not um, and also just from going and failing a lot and you know it, you can't be fired which is kind of is, is a good thing because you come there when you don't know anything and I remember you know going to do the first cover and you know they sent me to photograph this really high-ranked um, uh, military guy and like on the way there they're like oh by the way this is a cover and <laughs> and I'm like okay it's like one of the first shots that I was doing there and technically it all went really wrong it looked awful and it still ran on the cover and I was very embarrassed um, but you know I was thrown in the water and so you know the next cover was better and the next cover was better um, so I feel like because everything was so intense and every day was so different yes we were training ourselves and also we were a bunch of really young uh, photographers and we were in it together and so maybe we were also very supportive of each other um, and kind of giving feedbacks for each other um, and even I can say that the writers that we were paired with um, were a big influence on the work um, I was making at least I felt that you know it was the first time you know, I feel like socially in um, when I came to the military, it was the first time in my life that I really felt like I belonged. You know, the, the bunch of small, you know, the small group um, that were in there were all young, um, artistic people. And the, the writers were um, kind of adopted me when I, when I came there and it, was, it felt really good. And they were so, so smart. Um, and I really felt inspired by you know what they had to say about anything and you know basically most of the time uh, that I spent there was you know every time we were paired with another writer from another field they all had fields that they were in charge of like Air Force, Ground Force uh, um, you know the, the unit that was in charge of weapons, the unit that was in charge of um, the um, social, uh, how do you say that, like HR mm. Um, so, and basically we were all, um, we were traveling by public transportation. So it was basically a lot of really long bus rides together with these people that, um, I just met. Um, uh, but you know, I, I really liked talking with them and kind of hearing what they had to say and sharing, you know, what I had to say. And I really liked that they valued what I had to say. Um, and yeah, and so I feel like maybe it's it's fair to say that they were a big influence too. Yeah, I feel like, you know, I had, I think maybe when I came to school, I only knew like one photographer uh, that I really liked his work. His name is Eddie Ness and he, he's an Israeli photographer, uh, very, um, very important in kind of the, the work that he was making. And uh, I feel like the work was groundbreaking for um, uh, for the Israeli art scene and he made a lot of work that had to do with identity and masculinity and you know it, it was a big inspiration and it, actually in the military I was one of the cover shots that I was making was a gesture for a famous photograph that he had of he had a whole uh, series about soldiers um, 
and it was all very, very kind of staged. His work is uh, from that uh, school of constructed realities, and so very uh, sketched and kind of like movie sets, like the lights and um, is all very planned, and the actors, the models are actors. And so um, we did this little interesting um, gesture with the actual with an actual uh, military unit that we found that. Uh, was the equivalent of what he was doing. Um, so, yeah, Eddie Ness is a big influence, and later, le years later, he became also a mentor and a friend. Um, I never had a dream or a plan to come to New York to like, or to leave Israel and, um, you know, to like make it somewhere. Like I never, I never really had a, like a long-term planning. Like I was always kind of seeing just the next months. And so when I was almost done with the military, I, um, someone asked me, like some family friend asked me, what are you going to do after you're done here? And I honestly like didn't know what to tell her. And she said, like, what about going to study abroad? And I was like, all, like, right away I told her, no way. Like, and I listed all of the reasons why it would never happen. Like, I said, it's really expensive. Like, my English was really bad back then. Um, like, I'm, I was like, no, it's not going to happen. And then, um, but since then, like, it, she kind of seeded that idea in my head and it started evolving and I realized that I just been through such an intense experience in the military and I, I felt so like I felt like the next step should be big I shouldn't just go to the most comfortable and convenient you know like option of like an art school in the next city so um, so yeah and then I met this uh, this woman who was um, doing the same position I was doing in the military but a few years before me and she um, came to New York and went to SVA got the same scholarship that I got and so I just started um, questioning her like she is such a great person because <laughs> I nagged her so much I had so many questions um, and she was really helpful in kind of presenting me with all of the possibilities and the ideas and um, I followed her route and um, and I came to and I, I, I said if I'll get the scholarship I'll come um, so I that's what happened and I just kind of find my found myself here um, like first time out of you know living out of home uh, in this really foreign place where I didn't speak the language very well okay. um, and it was um, an adventure. I, I mean, I think, you know, it's essentially I really enjoyed it and, you know, school was such a great thing for me to do, you know, I mean, I, I, I know a lot of self-taught photographers that were never schooled and they make excellent work, but um, for me, I really, really needed that structure and also I'm, I'm good with those kind of structures, like I'm a hundred percent there and so I live in school, like I... I didn't see anything else, I didn't do anything else, I was just there all the time. Um, and that four years here really allowed me to form this network of um, colleagues, of dancers, of um, you know, people that later on really helped me to start you know, as a freelancer. And I really feel like I'm rooted here, you know, like I have, I'm, I'm not in love with New York, like I'm not looking at it in this, you know, glowing eyes and, um, you know, I, I love New York, I love being in New York, I could, I could see myself in many other places, but I don't think I want to go anywhere else uh, right now because I feel like the network that I've built here is everything, is, you know, it's, it's, and it's a network that built with many tiny pieces bit by bit. So it's not like, you know, I, I look at friends of mine who are doing, you know, in other professions and they basically, and they're like full-time employed, they can find an equivalent job in a different place. Um, for me, both in my fine art and in my um, commercial practices, m 
my network is really made out of so many small details and I, I worked on it very delicately for a really long time. So I, I feel like I need to stay here because I, I spent so much time growing that like little tree and now I need to like sit by its shadow. <laughs>